topic this week about whether companies should allow employees to work from home. Obviously, Yahoo's Marissa Meyer started the dialogue with her bombshell announcement that starting in June, all employees are going to be expected to show up at the office or else find work somewhere else. It is a controversial move generating heat on what's best for the company's bottom line. So is working from home progress or is it unproductive? Joining me now with both sides are Hadley Heat from the Independent Women's Forum and Republican strategist Noelle Nick Poor. Ladies, welcome to the show. Um, you know, this is a really interesting test case for the rest of the economy because it's someone standing up and saying, listen, this isn't okay. If you're not here, I don't know what you're really doing. I don't know that you're working. You're not talking to people in the hallways. You know, there are actual meetings and there's something, you know, beneficial from actually physically being here. And she's saying, if you're not here, you don't have a job any longer. Hadley, what do you think about that? Well, I'm not going to pretend like I know more about what's better for Yahoo than their CEO, Marissa Mayer. It's her choice. It's her prerogative to set that kind of strict workplace policy. But I think it would be a mistake to suggest that overall, working from home makes workers less productive. That's simply not true. In fact, a study from the University of Texas suggests that working from home boosts productivity and people who work from home spend five to seven hours more each week working. Yeah. Noelle, I mean, this becomes a women's issue, yeah. um, you know, whether we want it to or not. And we would be so mad if there was a guy out here saying this is a women's issue. Yeah. We would just cut him off the knees, but I'm a woman, so I'm going to say it. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people work, they say they're working from home because then they don't have to, you know, pay for childcare or it makes it more manageable, whatever. I have two little kids. I can't get any work done at home because if I'm there, they know I'm there. They come in. Um, I, I, you know, does this. Is there the danger that this becomes, you know, a you're against women, even though you are a woman, because you're telling everybody to come into work? You know, coming from a woman's perspective, you're not against women usually, you know, because I am a woman. Matter of fact, I'm just like you. I've got a business that I run, and I run it out of my house, and I've got to be honest, sometimes the doorbell rings, and I take a break, take a break. She is right with what she's doing, and you can tell she's on the right track with what yeah. she's doing because camaraderie, there are ideas that come with other people in the workplace. She's doing the right thing. Look, Yahoo's stock already went up 50%. Yeah. So, you know, they've hired her. She's shrewd. She knows what she's doing. She knew she was going to catch flack. You cannot yeah. call in in a tech, you know, dot com industry and tell people, which a lot of them work for home, and you can't yeah. tell them to come into the office without catching flack. So she knew this was going to be a media blitz. Yeah. Yeah, Hadley, but is this part of, you know, sort of a developing almost backlash movement where she's being har harsh, you know, saying you've got to, if you want a paycheck, you need to show up in the office. At the same time, you have Sheryl Sandberg from Facebook out in the road. She's promoting her book, Lean In, where she, I mean, the basic thesis is like if you haven't gotten ahead in the world as a woman, it's because you aren't working hard enough. I mean, that's basically the premise of her book, and it's the same sort of no nonsense attitude that Marissa Meyer is putting out there as well. Is this part of a new sort of, you know, almost being tough with people, tough love as opposed to being soft? Well, it's interesting because there's about 20 to 30 million people in the United States who take advantage of some kind of work from home option, even if it's just once a week. And that number has actually been boosted by more than 11% since 2008. So that is a fad. That's certainly part of the evolution of the workplace. That is it we going see away? Today. I don't think it's going away. I think that is actually the future because we're going to see firms competing uh, for the best and most talented workers. And most workers, men and women, parents and non-parents alike, like to have a good work-life balance. So this yeah. is a place where I'm afraid Yahoo may be limiting themselves ultimately. In the sense that, I mean, Hadley, what do we lose by forcing people to come in the office? What do you lose? I mean, do you not, the arguments have been that you end up with more mediocre workers um, because there's a lot of great people that would only work from home. Um, you know, it destroys the environment because people are driving more. What do you lose if you force people to come into the office? And then I'll ask Noel to respond to that. Right. Well, there are more overhead costs when you need more office space to accommodate more workers, more days per week, and the commuting costs. Of course, you mentioned those. Ultimately, the flexibility that people have to be around their families, to spend more time juggling, you know, going to the store or doing your laundry at a time of day that's more convenient for you versus being on your email, being on your iPhone constantly. Yeah. When you work from home, you may not be in the office ever, but that also means that you're never really off the clock. There's a 24-hour work cycle that yeah. comes along. 
along with having that flexibility. I'm not sure I'm ever off the clock anyway, Noel. No, I don't know. I mean, the, car. In our, the way we are right now, you have your Blackberry, you have your computer with you, you have your iPad. I mean, we've kind of have become a culture where your boss does expect you to respond basically all the time. Yes, yeah, so and Melissa, women wear so many different hats, so we're never off the clock, so to speak. You know, yeah. married, children, whatever you have, you wear so many different hats as a woman where a man does not. But I think that I do agree with the Yahoo CEO and the fact that it does increase productivity because when I'm working for a candidate, I raise money for candidates. When I'm working for home, I do it at my own pace. When I am, when I have to go to the senator's office, so to speak, I am really forced yeah. to participate in other areas where I may not have done that at home. So yeah. I do think I do see what she's trying to do. And you know what? They hired her to do it. Let her do it. If it yeah. doesn't work, they can always send them home. That's right. That's <laughs> right. And shareholders seem to like it. Ladies, great discussion. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks. Thank you. So here is our money question of the day. Working from home, is it progress or is it unproductive? So far, your responses have been mixed, but we want to hear from more of you. You can like us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Melissa Francis Fox or follow me on Twitter at Melissa A. Francis, where a lot of you said the same thing that I think, which is that I'm just not that productive from home because there's so many distractions. I don't know. That's me. All right. Up next on money, if an American